Hey guys! So I'm in central London on the way to an event I'm meant to be helping out at and I haven't got any of the kiddies with me Sam's got all three at home. Thank you for the love on the glasses. The love you said that you really like them. Thank you. As you know I usually wear contact lenses but I thought let me switch it up and get a new pair of specs and I'm really really loving them. So I shall be there in a bit. It's an Oxford Circus. I'm just super excited to show you what it's about. It's an event for singles, married, courting people, just you know edifying each other and learning from one another. So I'll be there in a bit. Hey guys! This is my friend Kika. She's shown up quite a few times on my vlog. <laughs> but Kika, if I'm being an amazing friend, actually runs a ministry, Pure Pure Hearts Ministries. And we're here today at her event. Aww. And what is on for? Restoring Purity. And I'm an usher today. She, Bibi's got hidden talents. <laughs> Twin, mother of twins, dentist, and the world's best usher that you've ever seen. I love to serve. She's an amazing server. She's quite a good friend. She came all the way to this usher. Okay. Amazing. So it's been really, it's going to be a really amazing day. We've got Tim and Bree coming in. Yeah. And she's got a panel coming up. So I'll just show you guys what's going on today. relationships I'm not gonna have with another man I'm not gonna have a certain friendship with another man my husband isn't gonna see you in the street and say oh come I'll give you a lift to wherever you're going if you're a single woman he'll say hey how are you doing no worries the bus is coming <laughs> give it a few minutes <laughs> That's the exact thing about life if we don't know why we're alive why God called us to be yet we're all here to serve God but there's a specific reason there was a problem in this world <coughs> that God said, I'm going to create a Russian machine. There's a specific reason, there's a specific problem in this world that God created every single one of us for. He gives us all the materials we need to build that. There's a certain purpose in my life. That's why eventually I'm married to myself. You know, so once you understand the purpose of your life, everything else will fall into place. I've discovered that it's not sin when a thought comes to your mind, but when it becomes a meditation, that's when it becomes an issue. So, you know, I know we've talked about time management, but for me, the past few years is about mind management. How do I control the way I think? What am I thinking about? And I think purpose is such a key part in relationships. Your relationships are guided by purpose. So, I know that makes sense. That's really good. Um, just to be very, very honest, because I'm, I'm a single lady, sometimes it is easy to blur those lines emotionally. Um, it's, you know, last night I couldn't sleep um, and the Lord was kind of sharing with me a few things about today and one of the things I wrote down is only give what you're comfortable giving to a friend. If you said that you guys are friends, then only give what you're comfortable giving to a friend. Does that make sense? So you don't give your all and then, you know, expect him to become something else. Your intimacy should never precede commitment. Make the commitment, then match the intimacy. Does that make sense? So when it comes to dealing with relationships and setting boundaries, my boundaries are, can I do this for another guy friend? Would I be speaking to another guy friend at this hour? Am I comfortable giving this, giving this part of my life or sharing this much of my heart with someone that will only ever be a friend? If he has said he's a friend, then treat him as a friend. Um, because a lot of us as women, we give so much, we're hoping for so much in return, but it doesn't work like that. It never works like that. So give your com you know, let him give you a level of commitment and match that with intimacy. The greatest level of commitment is marriage and you match that with intimacy. If you said you guys are just friends, then give him the intimacy of just being a friend. And I know it's good to be a friend, but I don't talk with my friends past certain hours. I'm still going to live for God. I'm still going to honor God. I'm still going to do what I said I was going to do. Because, listen, the ultimate goal is not to get married. The ultimate goal is to please and honor God. So if he didn't help you, so what? Your obedience is the covenant connector. Those are the things that sometimes we think that partial obedience is partial obedience is still disobedience. So you can do one part and don't do the other. That's still disobedience. You have to complete the whole task at hand. Amen. And uh, one another thing that we like to talk about um, is uh, you have to create a team that will fortify the things that you believe in. Individuals who are going to push me to my greatness. 
If you don't have people around you that can push you to your greatness, you have the wrong crew. My father-in-law always says, if you're the smartest person in your crew, you need to find a new crew. You have to find people that will push you. And iron. the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. If you have some, if you around a bunch of plastic in your iron, what good is that to you? What good is that to you? So we always say, surround yourselves with like-minded people. If you don't take that away, if you don't take anything away, take that away. Please don't fortify yourselves with people who are yes people, who tell you what they want to hear, or people who are the antithesis of what the Bible is asking us to be and to live up. So I finished with the event, which is amazing. I'm just heading home now, but I thought, since I'm in central London, I can make a cheeky little visit to Long Tall Sally, because as you all know, I am a six foot one sister, so I can't really shop in regular shops. I have to shop online, so it feels good to actually go to a regular shop today. So I'm here now, about to check it out. Hey guys, so I'm heading out with this gorgeous girl. Say hello, friends. Hello, friends. And what is that you've got, Liv? Uh, a pom pom. It's a red nose. Red nose day. Where'd you get that from? Uh, Auntie Liz. Auntie who? Auntie Liz. <laughs> she has a little hiccup there. Auntie Liz, that's Sam's um, sister. Okay, so basically, it's just me and Liz, me and Liz, me and Liv today, and Sam is home with the boys because we're just going to head out. It's a bit cold. It's a bit cold today, that's why she's wearing her jacket. There's an NCT group, which is, I don't know if people go to it, before you have kids, people join little um, mother and, in fact, mother, father and baby groups, and they follow each other along, and they, they have like a branch sale, and I'm oh. big on thrifting, so if I can get a deal, I don't mind, this is how we save money, financial tip number one, don't be afraid to get things second hand, you definitely don't mind. So I'm just going to head over there and see if they have any neat toys or item or baby items I can get for the kids to restock up on them. So are you ready to go? Yes. Sit down babe. Seatbelt on. Yeah. Hello. Hello. So we're here now and there's so many people here. So we're just going to see if we can find a few things for the kiddies. Guys, we were just about to leave and Livy just surprised me as usual. She looked at this and she said, Mommy, I want to go inside the shop. And I was like, how did you know that's a shop? Because it doesn't really look like a shop. And she goes, there, it's written up there. Livy, show me. Show me again. Show me shop. Where's it say shop? Spell that for me. S. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. My child is a genius. Like, she's actually really, really bright. You are a genius, Livy. You know that, right? You're so I smart. Go you ain't going inside. Unfortunately, you can't because it's closed. It's a weekend. But you can spell shop at three. In fact, you can read the word shop, which is amazing. So I really need to do a homeschool video soon. But look at her. She's running away. Livy, not in the road, please. Oh, gosh. So she saw that woman jogging and she had to copy her. <laughs> oh, Livia. Oh, Livia. Hey Caleb! Hey Mama! Hey Grandma! He absolutely loves this. Are you having fun? This is like the best thing ever invented. <laughs> Good job, buddy! Oh. Oh. You finished! What's up? So we are just on the way to church. We finally got everyone ready, but we had a little bit of extra help today from yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandma. Grandma. This is Sam's mum. I feel like they look alike. Guys, tell me what you think. I don't know if I can get both of them. You mean we look alike or you look alike? Well, you know, a lot of people actually tell me that I look like my mother-in-law or yes. mother-in-love, as I like to call her. <laughs> they tell amazing. me that as well. They tell you we look alike as well? <laughs> No, even like at the wedding, at the wedding, people the wedding. were asking like, you know, is that the mother of the groom mm -hmm. or is that the mother of the bride? <laughs> and all this sort of 
Chill now, okay? <laughs> oh gosh, she's happy. So yeah, we're gonna be there very soon. But as you can see, everyone is sleeping. I don't know if I'm zooming on them, so... Yeah, they're breakfast, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big breakfast. Abby's sleeping. I'm sure they wake up when we get to church. Noah <laughs> is sleeping. <laughs> is Liv sleeping as well? Oh, and yeah. is sleeping. Uh, oh my gosh, I wish I should like frame this moment. Everyone is fast asleep. That's why the car is so peaceful and quiet. Alright, we'll be there in a bit. Looking forward to it. And the students actually going to be in Sunday school today. Yes, the start of Sunday school. Mm -hmm, they start, well, they're not in Sunday school. They're in like the preschool Sunday school. Um, which is really good because they were in crash before but they've got too big for that now it's just strange that they're just moving up and up so quickly and even like school applications are opening we have to start picking which school they go to but we spend a lot of time looking at schools they're crazy we're taking them to crash not long ago and now they're ready in like preschool so it's not preschool nursery school like reception already yeah yeah the time it's goes so fast i feel it's like it's a great journey though like they're learning so much, picking up new things. Yeah, it's a really good, um, it's good, really good Sunday school. I help out some weeks. I'm not on this week. So we're back home now. Grandma's come, baby Kayla. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, big boy. He's actually just too big for this now. We're just bringing him here just to like sit for a bit. And Papa Bear is cooking, 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 cooking. What you got? What you got, baby? What you got? Pancakes. Pancakes. Oh. Have it. There we go. Ooh. Looking good. I just love it when I have a man who can cook. Mm -hmm. Thank you, baby. Teamwork. Well, it's pancakes, but you can do so many other things as well. I can do toast. <laughs> I can do cereal. <laughs> I can kind of do eggs. You know what I thought would be a good question? In your household, or maybe when you were growing up, who did most of the cooking? Was it your mum or your dad? Like, when I grew up, it was definitely my mum. I love my dad, but he you just would not find him in the kitchen. Uh, what about you? Same here. Your dad? Same here. Your mum? Mum did all the cooking. Mum, you did all the cooking. I used to I used to teach them how to cook them. I yeah, because Sam, did you see? Because Sam I have a lot of boys, so, so I have to force them to know how to cook. Yeah, because well, there's three boys and one girl, so I guess... My dad knows how to cook yeah, as well. Yeah, because he was raised by his grandmother, so he yeah, knows how to, he knows how to cook. cook as well. So that's where Sam sometimes, gets it from. Sometimes it comes to the kitchen, not all the time. Yeah, all the time. Nigerian men. Yeah, yeah, Nigerian men don't like that. Like twice in the last 40 years. Cinnamon and... Uh, Secret ingredient pancakes. Looking good. So the twins love it. Mm, sure they'll love it. Uh, Hubby's here on washing up. And you know what the funny thing is? We have a dishwasher baby. What? You know we, we do? have yes. I and you still that. insist on always washing up. Mama yeah. raised me right. <laughs> Mommy, did you ever have a dishwasher growing up? No. No. What's a dishwasher? Because Sam never wants to use a dishwasher. I never been up that way. He washes hands. You use hands to wash. So that's no why dishwasher. that's why he never wants to use the dishwasher. Yeah, he's not used to dishwasher. <laughs> he's not used to it. He grew up in the forest. <laughs> Did you have a washing machine, love? No. Keep the place nice and tidy. If you do bits of washing up quickly, then you never have a big pile of washing up to do. Is that your tip? Yep. So do the little bits quickly so you never have a big pile. That sounds like some great advice, baby. Thank you. Thank you for helping, I appreciate you. Appreciate you too, love. Go team! Go team! Go Where's team. Me? Boo! So since food is ready and they're just about to eat it, I know they're pretty hungry right now, but they're just waking up from their nap. So just going to feed them some pancakes that they made. Do you like it, guys? Delicious? And don't forget to eat your salad as well. You can eat all your salad and vegetables. I just want tomatoes. Okay, you eat the cucumbers though, right? Yeah. Okay, good girl. Baba Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Shem Baba, Baba so I tend to eat in their lunch and you can hear Caleb in the background. I'm just going to get some of their clothes ready because we're heading out. I'm going to have a fun family shoot with one of my good friends who's also a photographer as well. And she actually helped me do the shoot for Caleb when he was a newborn. And now she wants to help us get some family photos done, which I'm really excited about because we haven't really had anyone's all together in a long time. So this will be a good one just to add to the house. So I'm really looking forward to it. So we're just at the shoot now with my lovely photographer, Hi. Patricia. I'll put her details for she's amazing. Oh, so, thank you so much. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's going to try and help us take a photo with three kids, three and under. So we'll see how this goes. So we're just going to try and do it real quick because we're losing light. So we are just heading out real quick, almost like a little mommy and daddy day afternoon because grandma has the kids. Woo, 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 woo. Well, she's got the twins, so she's going to have all three. So we've got Caleb, but he's just a calm cucumber. Snug. He's just so cute and so calm. So we thought we'd use it just to kind of just go and get something to eat or a drink. So we are in Starbucks, about to enjoy a little beverage. <laughs> it's just good to finally just get some alone time, i.e. without toddlers. Caleb doesn't really count because um, nursing mama life, so I have to keep him with me. And grandma, grandma can't really cope with all three, but bless her for even taking on the twins. So we've got about 20, 30 minutes left. So just some time to talk. Relax. Have a chin wag, how was your week, plan the week ahead. And I'm enjoying a chai tea latte, which is pretty much my signature drink whenever I come here. I've had that for a while, haven't I? Like, since forever. Yeah. yeah since we're dating, it's so always like, chai tea latte. Or we're like, um, I don't know what to have today. Should I have a hot chocolate or a frappuccino? Oh, I'll go with the chai tea latte again. <laughs> Pretty much I do every single time. And Sam's the same, he pretty much has a coffee each time. Another thing I think would be really good to know is what do you guys have when you come to these kind of coffee shops? Do you have coffees like Sam? Do you like your teas like me or hot chocolate or something else? Let us know. So Sam is just about to do Caleb's four month chalkboard. He's the one who always does it. So I'm just gonna show it as he makes it. Let's go baby. Hi guys, so we're just in the middle of our family study, or I guess you could call it family all the time, and we try and do this at least once a week with all three kiddies together. Usually my husband reads to them at night, the Bible, and then once a week we try and make sure all five of us together, just being intentional about introducing the kids to the word, and to worship, and to prayer. So I thought, you know, I'd bring you guys along, I just interchange Caleb's nappy, and I thought, you know, why don't I just show you some of the stuff we do, and just share with you how we, you know, try and introduce introduce the word to three preschoolers. So here we go. A small town in Galilee. And one day Mary went about her daily task. She's making dinner. 
And then she noticed a stranger watching her. Where's the stranger? That's the stranger. The stranger's watching her. No, that makes a noise. That's the stranger. Yes, and there's some light. And the stranger said, I am Gabriel. So the angel came, and what did the angel say to Mary? Uh, what did the angel say to Mary, Mary Noah? Uh, he have a baby where we food. Soon, yeah. And what's the baby's name going to be? Jesus, yes, so the angel came and told Mary she had a baby. Yes, because this is Joseph. Joseph was a carpenter and he worked with wood. And when you work with wood, the floor is always messy. So we've just finished and another thing we do is they have a memory verse for the week and then they kind of recite it just so it encourages them to learn scriptures. Let's be real, if these guys can recite the whole song for Peppa Pig and Princess pretty much knows every word for Princess Sophia, there's nothing wrong with those things. I see no reason why they shouldn't be able to memorize a few important scriptures. So Princess, what's our scripture for this week? Bible. And which one is this one? Uh, John 313. Good girl. And come and read it for me, please. Cool girl. Then uh, let me talk. John 316. Good girl. And what does that say? Uh, for God loved, loved the world and gave us his I need Good job. Jesus. Good job, guys. You've learned it already. Oh, Alright, we'll have to get a new one for this week. Good job to you. Give me a big hug. And what's that one? Oh, good job. That sun. You read that. Mwah. Well what's done. What's that? Well done. What's I'm that? heading off to Kayla's baby massage class. Are you excited, little man? And oh my arm guys, he's getting so big, he's like proper giving me mummy biceps. Those are like the biceps you get from carrying babies and car seats all day. And um, yeah, so we're really excited. As you can see, I'm rocking the no makeup look and pretty much didn't have time to brush my hair because we had to rush off out of the house. But mummy life, this is real life guys. So um, I'm really excited. One thing I like about the classes, it just gives me time to have one-on-one -on -one time with Caleb. Sometimes I don't really get to do much with the twins in the house and I just miss that little one-on-one -on -one time with a baby. So it's really, really nice. Um, the other thing as well, when I had the twins, the baby massage woman used to come to our house. But now I get to go to classes and meet other mamas and just, you know, have a nice community with other mamas as well, which I really like. So we're heading off there now and we'll be there very soon. Done, Caleb. Time to go home now. So I am in London. Where am I now? Stepney Green. I don't know if you can hear me right now. And guess who I've got with me? Hello, Caleb. Hello, my little man. Baby carrying mamas. This is like the easiest way to carry your child around. So I'm on the way to see Grandma because she's flying back to Nigeria today. So we just thought we'd try and catch her. The twins are in nursery, so it's just me and Caleb. The struggle was real getting on the tube. This is actually his first time underground, so we're just on our way. So really excited. Hi guys, I'm almost at the house. It's been a long ride, there were some tube delays, but Caleb did really well for his first time on the tube. I was really impressed. And everyone was just staring at him because he just looked so cute in here. You were really good today, weren't you, son? 
So we're in London now. We're going to see Grandma. I don't know if she knows if I'm coming. I think my sister-in-law might have told her, but hopefully we'll get to surprise her before she heads home. We're almost at the house. And he is hungry. Yes, you are. I was coming. Yes, Liz told me, but Liz didn't tell me you are coming with Kelly. Oh, so I didn't know you are coming with Kelly. So it's a bit Caleb. of a surprise. It's a big surprise. Hey guys, so we're in the car on the Hi. way. Hi Kelly, so yeah. <laughs> smiley. Hello, mommy. Hi. Hello, Liz. Hi. and just getting mommy's boxes weighed but unfortunately it was a little bit overweight the weight limit is actually 30 kilograms and then we're going to head over <laughs> and then after we've weighed it we're then going to head off to the box wrap service so we've got a few more minutes spare so I'm just nursing Caleb and my sister in love has got me some yummy snacks what have you got me girl? some chai latte What's up? The lighting is really bad. We're just heading out. <laughs> it looks so spooky. I've never filmed this late before. I just found a bit of light up there. We're heading out for a bonfire night. And so fireworks. Fireworks. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be really good. I feel like I should put them in like some kind of reflective clothes because I can barely see them. <laughs> Hold up, guys. And Caleb's in this cute little baby carrier. So we can have some family time. Let's go.